Hi, I'm Cindy with Earth Science Resources, and today we're speaking with Estela Leon Aguilar. She is a geotechnical engineer. My name is Estela. I am a geotechnical engineer by profession. Uh, I have been in the industry for about nine years now. Um, I was um, was born and raised in, in Costa Rica. I've been in the U.S. for over 15 years now. Uh, so it's like half of my life uh, here and there. Um, and uh, I am mostly in the construction business. Uh, so what do I do as a geotechnical engineer? Um, the, the always the inside joke in a way is I play with dirt for a living and I get paid for it. Uh, geotechnical engineering, at least the specific aspect that I'm involved with is uh, basically before construction, you want to know what foundation, what you're going to build your structure over. Uh, so as a geotechnical engineer, we always go to, to the job sites, uh, to the different sites that are planned to be developed. We do the soil investigation. There's different methods of investigation. Uh, the most common is the standard penetration uh, test. So we do these borings uh, um, throughout the sites. And basically based on that data, based on the samples that we gather, uh, we determine what kind of foundation is uh, uh, proper to, to support the structure. Um, one thing that we always say is uh, you can build in any side. It always comes down to how much money are you willing to spend. So it's, you get you have to get a little sometimes creative with very complicated sides as to how to do improvement and things like that. Uh, but in a nutshell, um, the basics is uh, uh, as, uh, at least in the area that I am in the geotechnical industry. I'm more in the in the consulting that sense that I'm not a designer, but I, we're just more in the invest investigation portion. And based on the information that we gather, then we provide recommendations as to what kind of foundation the structure should be supported on and any uh, kind of remediation that needs to be done to the site in order to safely support the structure. So it's always done uh, before construction. We're always uh, basically the, the first uh, to, to set foot on, on, on any site. From my beginning, like uh, I, I always knew I was going to be a, a, a civil engineer. Uh, my father was a civil engineer, and I so that was kind of like where I was heading towards. I always found it very interesting. Um, the geotechnical aspect, I didn't realize it, or I didn't find it, or learn about it. I was actually in school. I took my first uh, soil mechanic classes. And it was an instant uh, uh, love that is like, this is what I want to do. This is really interesting. This is really cool. Uh, so the rest of my, my uh, career or my, my studies, I went towards the, towards the geotechnical. So once I finished my bachelor's in a civil engineering degree, my master's degree in civil engineering also was with an emphasis in geotechnical engineering. Um, was fortunate enough to during my my last few years uh, of college, I was fortunate enough to find opportunities when it comes to internships. Um, those are very tough to find. It's one of those where it's a, a lot about who you know. Um, us being kind of new to the country, I don't we didn't really know people. Um, so I was very fortunate to find the one that I did, um, and that they gave me the opportunity. They took the, the they kind of took a chance on me on on just letting me come aboard and, and learn. Um, and that aspect, that uh, hands on hand was another uh, big part of, okay, I really wanna stick with this. Um, so once I, I graduated, I, I was able to find uh, an entry level engineering uh, with, a, with a geotechnical engineering company, um, same, same kind of business that I'm currently on in the, what we call consulting. And uh, started with that company, was there with them about a, um, a year and a little bit and uh, something that I wasn't looking for kind of found me uh, this company that I've been with uh, for uh, over six years now um, they were kind of looking for uh, a young engineer uh, at the time I was an engineer intern I didn't have my professional engineer license yet I wasn't eligible yet um, and it was one of those things that you're not looking uh, but then um, 
when the opportunity came about, I was very interested because of the um, the possibilities. And when you look into the company, the where I was, I was probably going to stay there and wasn't going to move much with this other company um, based on the different things. And I think uh, the person who recruited me, I think he did pretty good on selling me that as well, uh, of letting me know all the different things that they were involved with, all the different things that they did, the different projects that they're involved with, the different type of industries or, or uh, people that they do work for. Um, so even though I wasn't looking, I'm like, sure, why not? This looks uh, like a, a good path for me. So I, I, I basically left where I was, not because I was unhappy, just because uh, I, I'm not one to sit comfortably. Uh, I want to look for more. Um, so I've, I've been kind of the rest is in, in that sense is history being with this company now for uh, just over six years. Uh, same thing, I started as an entry-level engineer. Um, and a lot of that is, it has to do a lot with the, the fact that the company gives you that opportunity. I had great mentors uh, that taught me a lot throughout the process. They always made sure that, um, uh, you know, as an engineer, I was growing. Um, and through through time, obviously a lot of hard work. I, I, I'm one who cares about what I'm doing. Um, so working a lot through it, really caring about the job, uh, caring about what I'm doing, give, caring about what I'm presenting to clients. I, I take a lot of pride on, on what I'm putting out there. Um, and so within a couple of years, I got my professional engineering license. I took my exam, I passed it. Uh, and uh, soon after that, uh, the position for the department manager of, of the technical department opened up, and uh, I was, you know, they 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 gave me the the position. Um, it wasn't that they were they were they weren't looking to outsource it elsewhere. They weren't looking elsewhere. They it was um, I was fortunate enough where they were waiting for me to get my professional engineering license to basically almost in a way give me the position because I had worked really hard for it and I had to stick around and, and really work for the department. Uh, so that's kind of how I, I landed there. Uh, and so now I've been the head of the department for we're three years, I think now we're coming close to the three years uh, or is it four? Time flies. <laughs> um, but I've been fortunate enough to be here and, and as the company has grown, um, we, I, the company initially was a small company, you know, we were like 200 people and they have been going through a, a bunch of, uh, different acquisitions and things like that. The company has grown tremendously, uh, but I have been fortunate enough that they have left me where I are. Cause you know, when, with mergers and acquisitions and things like that, they tend to start moving people around or the seniority takes, uh, precedence and things like that. But, um, I, I was fortunate enough that, uh, the people who have me believe in all of my work and, and respect my work and all of that, they love me in place once, once this whole thing started happening. What I always uh, think to, I wish I knew, uh, and, it, and I also take an active role in that sense now to almost spread the word is, I wish I knew more. I wish I knew uh, the, the different opportunities that the industry provided. Yes, I fell in love with the just technical engineering um, option or idea, but I had no idea of all the different um, things that I could have done in a just technical engineering role, the different, um, I guess, sub industries or options that there was. Um, so I wish I knew more. I wish that that's something that I, I would have figured out sooner. Um, I wish there would have been more information available about it, that there was more, uh, you know, schools or uh, I guess at a college level, university level, that would have exposed us more to those different options and not just here's a bunch of classes uh, uh, about what this kind of entitles um, and not really let you know what, how many options you had. I don't know, um, and I'm always totally honest about this. I don't know that if I knew what I know now that I would be where I'm at now. 
I think I am now here and I'm comfortable and, uh, and, and I'm still moving and the spirit is still pretty active, but I don't know that I would have done this specifically with your technical engineering. I think that there are so many other different really cool things out there that I know from now talking to these other women professionals in the industry um, of all those different uh, things that there is, that all those different things that I could have done. Um, that's, my, that's my biggest um, biggest thing. It's like, I wish I would have done more research. I wish I wouldn't have just stuck with the first thing that kind of came across and, and run with it. Um, that I would have done a bit more research about what different areas of the industry I could have tried, at least try. Maybe maybe I would have ended up in a circle and, and, and get back to where I'm at, but at least I would have tried the different um, uh, different things that, they, that it offered. That's, that's my biggest thing.